Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about comparing and ordering fractions, decimals, and percents. And this is a little bit like translating from one language to another. But instead of translating from English to French, we're going to be translating from English to math. We're going to talk about fractions, decimals, and percentages. And they're all useful concepts. They're all useful tools. And they all have different uses. For instance, a fraction. Well, if you had five people in a room and four of them had brown hair, it would be easy to say that four out of five, or four over five, was the fraction that represented the people that had brown hair. But if you had 1,062 people in the room and you wanted to know how much four-fifths of that was, it would be a lot easier to do that with a decimal because 0.8 times a, a big number is a lot easier to multiply than a fraction multiplied by that large number. And percentages are real useful too. If I told you that 65% of the people that take math master math end up getting an A you might think I'm lying and I might be but you'd understand what I'm saying so percentages are really good communication tools within math today we're going to talk about translating between those three uh, measurements and first let's talk about translating a fraction to a decimal by now I hope you know that that line that you see in a fraction can be uh, interpreted in several different ways. We can say that that fraction is four-fifths. We could also say it's four over five. We could also say it's four divided by five. And that's the interpretation I want you to remember right now because four over five equals four divided by five. And four divided by five is 0.8 and 0.8 is the decimal equivalent of four-fifths. Well, how about translating from a decimal to a fraction? Well, you know, I hope by now, that when we have a decimal, after the, after the, the dot, the numbers have place values. That 3 is in the 1 tenth value, and that 4 is in the 1 one hundredth, and the 5 is in the 1 one thousandth. And you notice that we just add a 0 to move back one spot. So, if I've got point three four five, the 5 is in the 1,000th place, so I can change that decimal to a fraction by putting the 345 over 1,000. Okay, well let's work on changing decimals to percentages or fractions to percentages. And it's going to be helpful if you remember that percent is not just an arbitrary word that we pulled out of the air. It means something. Percent means per cent per 100. Because the word cent means 100. And the word per means divided by. Remember when we had a fraction, 1 over 2, that was 1 per 2. So, that shouldn't be hard to, to remember if you remember that a penny is a cent, and a cent is 1 one hundredth of a dollar. So, per cent means per 100. Okay, let's look at converting decimals into percentages. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. I like the second way a lot better. But we could take 0.62 and multiply it by 100. And if we did that, we'd get 62%. The easier way that I think is to remember to just move 
the decimal point 2 to the right. And then 0.62 becomes 62%. Well, how about translating a fraction to a percentage? Well, there's a couple ways we could do that, too. The first way I'm going to show you, you're probably not going to use that often, but it'll help you understand a bit about uh, the relationship between fractions and percentages. If I've got a denominator that's a nice, easy multiple of 100, then I can multiply that denominator by whatever will change it to 100. In this case, 2 times 50 will change it to 100. And then I've got per 100 or per cent. And the numerator has to be multiplied by 50 as well. So 1 half is equivalent to 50 over 100 or 50 per 100 or 50 percent. Well, I think the second way is going to be a little bit easier for you in most cases. Uh, and that's to convert the fraction into a decimal. And you remember that 3 over 5 is the same thing as 3 divided by 5. And 3 divided by 5 equals 0.6 or 0 0.60. And to convert a decimal into a percentage, I just move the decimal point 2 to the right, and 0.6 becomes 60, 60%. Okay. Well, how about translating a percent into a decimal or a fraction? Well, that's not that hard either. Let's say I've got 38%. Well, now you remember when we converted a decimal to a percentage, we moved the decimal point two places to the right, which was the same thing as multiplying by 100. Well, if I want to change a percent to a decimal, I just reverse that process. I move the decimal point 2 to the left, and I get 0.38, which is equivalent to 38%. Here's another way you can do it, although I like the first way easier. I, do, I think it's easy to move those decimal points. You just got to remember which direction you move them in. Let's say I've got 38% again, and I want to change that into a, a percent, or into a decimal. 38% is 38 per 100. So it's 38 over 100. And 38 over 100 equals 0.38. Well, how about changing a percent to a fraction? Well, that's not that hard either. Remember, 42%, that's 42 per 100, 42 over 100, and I can simplify 42 over 100 to 21 over 50. I just divided the top and the bottom by, by 2 and I got 21 over 50. How about the second one? I've got 5.6% and I want to change that into a fraction. Well, that's 5.6 per 100. So it's 5.6 over 100. Well, 5.6, that's a kind of an awkward number to have in a fraction. So, to get rid of that decimal point, I need to multiply the 5.6 by 10. And if I'm going to multiply the top of the fraction by 10, i got to multiply the bottom of the fraction by 10. So now it becomes 56 over 1,000. And I can simplify that to 7 over 125. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Convert 0.346 to a percentage. Hmm, what do we do? Oh, I remember. If we're going to convert a decimal to a percentage, we multiply it by 100 or we move the decimal point two to the right. So I've got 0.346, I move the decimal two to the right, and I get 34.6 percent. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key.
Okay, I need to translate 15.5% into a fraction. Well, 15.5% is 15.5 over 100. But again, 15.5, it's weird to have a, a decimal in a fraction, so let's get rid of that by multiplying by 10. And I need to multiply the top and the bottom by 10. And I end up with 155 over 1,000, which I can simplify to 31 over 200. There's another way I could do this. 15.5%. Well, I can move that decimal 2 to the left, and 15.5 becomes 0.155. Now... That 1 is in the 10th spot, the 5, the first one's in the 100th spot, and the second one's in the 1,000th spot. So I can change the decimal 0.155 into a fraction that is 155 over 1,000. Okay. Place these numbers in order from largest to smallest. Well, the first thing we need to do is, is kind of like getting a common denominator. We have to put them into the same format so we can compare them. We could put them all into fractions. We could put them all into decimals. And we could put them all into percentages. And in any of those three cases, then we could compare them pretty easily. But they're harder to compare if they're, if they're in the mixed uh, uh, types. So let's convert them all and let's convert them to decimals. And you'll find that decimals are usually the easiest form to work with. So first, three-fifths. What's that equal? Well, we divide three by five and we get 0 0.6. We've got nothing to do with the 0.55 because it's already a decimal. 61%. We moved the decimal point two to the left, and 61% becomes 0.61. And 15 over 24. Well, we divide the 15 by 24, and we get 0.625. Well, now we're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges, and it's pretty easy to do. I can see that the largest one is 0.625. And then 0.61 is the next largest, and 0.6, and then 0.55. So the order is 15 24ths is the largest, 61% is the next, 3 fifths is the next, and 0.55 is the smallest. Well, we've finished our lesson on compare and order fractions, decimals, and percentages. And I hope you learned a whole lot. Now it's time to take it a little bit further. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on compare and order fractions, decimals, and percents and try your skill there. And then go back to Master Math and try the online quiz and find out if you really know this stuff well. I hope you enjoyed yourself and come back and see us real soon.